Hi, I'm Kelly Grayson. Welcome to Confessions of an EMS Newbie, live from the Physio Control Podcast Studio at EMS Expo 2012 in New Orleans. Um, I have here with me a number of guests today, but uh, I'd like to first thank our uh, episode sponsor, National Association of EMTs. Earlier today, uh, Jamie Davis got to talk to uh, Don Lundy and Gary Wingrove about NAEMT's new event reporting system, and let's see what uh, they had to say about that. Hi, this is Jamie Davis, the pod medic, and I am here with an episode sponsored by NAEMT to talk about event reporting and talking about r r how it will change the culture of, of how we handle safety and incident reporting in EMS. And I'm really excited to have uh, two individuals to talk to me about that and discuss this together. Um, first off, Don Lundy, President-elect of the NAEMT. You start in office in January? January 1st, yes sir. Okay, and you got a, a great year coming up, uh, I'm sure. A fantastic year, fantastic board. Uh, fantastic membership. I'm very excited. Very excellent. Excited. Excellent. We also have Gary Wingrove, the president of CLEAR. And Gary, I'm going to let you go ahead and tell us what, what exactly is CLEAR an acronym for? CLEAR is the Center for Leadership, Innovation, and Research in EMS. And it was formed by uh, the National EMS Management Association, the North Central EMS Institute, and the EMS Chiefs of Canada. So we serve North America. Okay. Now, the, the event reporting system, the you know, event, it's the uh, event is an acronym itself. And tell me a little bit about that. Event stands for the EMS Voluntary Event Notification Tool. And uh, we basically set up a website where um, EMS practitioners can go and anonymously report patient safety events and also paramedic near misses. Why is it important to have an anonymous reporting system? Well, um, EMS has a history of where it sort of grew up, and a lot of where we grew up was in the military. And so at many of our operations, uh, if you do something wrong, you don't report it because there's some, some sort of reprimand that, that comes along with that. So um, we basically followed what's happened in other parts of healthcare, in the hospital industry and with physicians. And uh, you start out trying to mold a culture of safety in an industry by um, allowing some tools to emerge that can that people can go to and say what they need to say, sort of get it off their chest and in an anonymous fashion so that it doesn't go to anybody else. But the nice thing is um, if you hear about one sort of an event in this pocket of the country and it happens in two or three other pockets of the country and a couple of provinces, nobody really knows about that stuff. But we've got sort of a central repository now where if we, see, if we would start to see a pattern of things happening with a particular piece of equipment or, or a specific kind of event, then um, we can communicate that out to people and they can use it for training and information. How long have you been collecting information used on this website? We started an event in July 2010. And then um, after the patient safety part was operating, we worked with NAEMT and their safety committee. They actually did all the hard work. They sort of came up with what data fields would be necessary to collect paramedic near miss uh, sorts of calls and also a line of duty death uh, registry. And uh, so their committees came up with the, the fields that they thought would be good and then uh, we tested those with uh, some people um, inside of NAEMT and outside of NAEMT to make sure that people could understand the questions the way we wrote them. And then um, the near miss part we made live in March of 2011. Um, at EMS Today in Baltimore. We have recently posted the first two years of an aggregate report for the patient safety system and then the third quarter of 2012 and we'll march that out every quarter going forward and then the first um, aggregate piece that we'll post for the paramedic near misses will be in January. Anything leaping out when you look at the data that's being released now? Is, is there anything that you're seeing any trends in what, what we're having problems with? Yeah, that's a really good question, and people ask that uh, a fair amount. So I can tell you about a couple of good experiences we've had. Everybody in EMS is aware of what's been going on the last couple of years with drug shortages. And as drug shortages have happened, people have had to go to other methods to um, be able to still treat patients, whether that be alternative medications or going to a compounding pharmacy or something else. And uh, so when you 
when you change the medication or the look of the medication in the paramedics drug box, um, then you know that can be an issue of, of them you know doing the double check correctly and all of that. So we have had several reports of uh, what we call look-alike packaging, whereby um, you used to use a, a green box and uh, it sat next to a red box, and the new manufacturer or compounder makes a red box for what used to be green, and you've got two reds sitting next to each other. And uh, people are grabbing the wrong one. Uh, the most serious report we've had about that actually was uh, someone reported that they were intending to give cardizem uh, and instead give a paralytic. So, um, you know, that can be very serious. Mm -hmm. But uh, what's come out of that now is the um, Congress has asked the General Accountability Office to look into the problem of, of our drug shortage specifically and, and the other parts of healthcare and the public. And uh, we were able to provide information directly to the General Accountability Office demonstrating the issues that paramedics are having. And we hope that will make a difference in the report that the GAO um, sends back to Congress and that the eventual action that Congress will take. So it was a great outcome for that one. So, and, and that's exactly what you were hoping, to, to, to kind of see things like that and be able to come up with potential solutions to solve some of these issues. Yes, absolutely. Don, what does this mean for the NAEMT uh, membership? Uh, first of all, I always advocate that providers become members of NAEMT. You represent us at the national level. Uh, so what does this kind of reporting system and, and your interaction with it mean? I'll tell you, I think one of the best things about this is this is uh, uh, the premier membership organization for, for EMS in general. We're not, we're not uh, delivery system specific. We, we look at everybody. And I think from a safety standpoint, we don't know what we don't know. We really don't have data uh, in regards to this. Uh, 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 Gary's tool has done an awesome job of starting to collect the data, and the more, the more we collect, the more we're going to know, I think probably more about what we didn't know and safety issues that we didn't know were out there, and like you mentioned, trends that are out there. The more data we collect, the better those trends will be. I think for the individual member of NEMT and EMS in general, it's going to make a safer workplace before they get hurt. Now, now the Department of Labor and many organizations post when somebody gets hurt. We all know about those. They're recorded very well, <laughs> but we're hoping to get it before it happens through uh, looking at a near miss before somebody gets hurt and correcting that. I think it'd be a, a dynamic thing to be able to jump on something before somebody's hurt or killed. What kind of things is NAMT doing to improve the culture of that safety approach? Well, I'm glad you asked that. One of the big projects that we've been working on and we just recently uh, got numbers is a physical fitness initiative. Now, when people hear physical fitness, they think of jumping jacks and they yawn and they want to go away. That's not, that's not exactly what we're looking at. We have a lot of agencies who approach us and say, what, what can I do to start a program? Is there a template? Well, we've gone ahead and hired ACE, uh, the American uh, Council on Exercise, and um, they've done a tremendous job of going out to paramedics and EMTs in the field and watching their job and what they do and watch some of the issues with injuries and, and how they stretch. Uh, and we have some pretty significant numbers. And in fact, I know this is going to be a shock to everybody, but the, the, uh, the weight issue that, that civilians are having closely mimics the weight issues that EMS is having. So the idea that we're healthier, maybe not so much, it's just in the, in the culture that we have of fast foods and ship work and not much sleep, uh, there's engineers working with these numbers, and probably by March or April, we're going to have some good templates that agencies can take back and at least start some kind of program to, to highlight the issue of being healthier. I have no idea what these are going to look like, but I'm very excited that NEMT is a part of that. And I think the Near Miss Project will be able to give us numbers that people will be able to look at specific corners of safety issues and say, here's a real safety issue we need to fix, and it might be equipment. It might be sleep patterns. I mean, we don't know what we don't know yet. How does an individual member uh, become more active in these types of issues through the NAEMT? Well, there's there's lots of ways to do it. We have uh, committees that we have, the Health and Safety Committee. Uh, we have uh, great opportunities to teach uh, all the all the products that we have, PHTLS and TCCC. 
uh, we have an advocacy committee which is very active and in, in, uh, I, would, I would ask anybody who's interested in learning a little more about how to, how to get involved is to contact one of the uh, board members, uh, contact NMT's office, raise your hand and say, I'd like to help. I have some expertise in this corner and uh, it would be a fantastic way to get on board. Excellent. Well, Don, thank you very much for coming on, and thanks to AM, NAEMT for uh, sponsoring this episode of the show. We really appreciate it. Well, great and, to have you. And, uh, you know, all the work we do here in, in the Physio Control Podcast Studio is, is really go geared towards making our profession safer um, and helping us improve patient outcomes. So it really awesome. is, is part of We're that. We're glad and to be a part you. of it. We are. Thank you. I'm and, Gary, thanks a lot for, for all you're doing and, and the, just the – continue to get that data out there for us so that we can continue to, to learn from it. So let me tell everybody how to get it. Okay. Um, so to report an event, you go to emseventreport.com, and then there are uh, a few buttons on the top. One is for patient safety events, one is for paramedic near misses, and one is for line of duty death registry. So that's how you can report. If you go to, if you want the uh, aggregate reports that we post, they're on the same website on the page that has um, the specific form. So if it's patient safety, which are the two reports we have posted now, it's on that form, the page that has the form that you would report that. We also have a Google group, and when someone uh, submits a patient safety event, we, um, we may modify it if there are identifiers in it to make sure that uh, you know, those are removed. And then we post it to a Google group, so if anyone's interested uh, immediately, everybody, you know, people that aren't on the group then see it when we do an aggregate report. Anybody that wants to join the Google group can send me an email at clearems, C-L-I-R-E-M-S, at gmail.com and uh, request to be added to the Google group and we'll take care of that right away. So they get the individual reports and then also the aggregate reports once we, once we post. Great. Well, we'll and we'll have that data information on the website, and uh, also it'll have appeared below the screen as if by magic uh, hey. while we're talking. So I want to thank you both for being here on the show, and again, thank you for continued support for EMS. And I want to thank all of you. We'll be back with the rest of this podcast episode in just a sec. <laughs>